Well, hello there. Are you going to join me for a coffee? That's getting a bit close to the edge. Oh, can you see it? <laughs> It's gone. Oh no. Look. That'll teach me not to put the lid on. Ooh. That looks like a souffle. Right, let's sit down and have a chat. Cheers. Mm. It's about 24 degrees outside. I'm wishing this was an iced coffee, but a frothy coffee is much appreciated nonetheless. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Right, so I thought it was about time I addressed something that people have raised with me recently. And it's a question that I think many of us need to know the answer to. And it's one that I can't give an honest answer. The question is, how many whips do I have? That may not be what some of you were expecting me to say, but we have come here to discuss whips. And of course, by whips, I mean works in progress. How many works in progress does Amanda have? Well, I think the answer is far too many. Um, again, like so many of us, because we're attracted to the shiny things, the new balls of yarn, the new patterns um, that you crafty designers keep bringing out and tempting us with. And I'm as bad and as guilty as so many of you and I just can't resist um, the lure of a new pattern or a new ball of yarn. Now, I really honestly don't know how many whips I have dotted around the house and I'm certainly not going to be able to cover them all in one video but I thought let's just dip our toe in the water well probably toes definitely won't just be one toe have you ever tried to dip one toe in the water that would be quite tricky so we're dipping our toes in the water to discover just how many whips Amanda me I have and I thought I'd start with what I have in my living room which is where I crochet what do I have in my immediate surrounding area so that's what we're going to investigate so what I'll do is I haven't got anything out because it's literally this is my space this is where I sit this is where I crochet and I'm going to just dip down, lean over the edge of the sofa and see what I can see. Actually, do you want to have a look down the edge of my sofa? Ignore any cobwebs and dust. Here we go. I'm taking you in. So here we go. This is down the side of my sofa. There's some bits down there. Now, there's also bits under the coffee table there. Uh -huh. There you go. I've shown you my hidey holes in here, in my living room. Um, and so they're the things that we're going to be looking at. Let's see what projects I have lurking. Should we go under the coffee table first? 
because I think they might be quite easy. Um, oh gosh, I say that and then I look and it's like, oh, I'd forgotten about that one. <laughs> Let's just dive in and see, shall we? Okay, so this is the first one. Now you might say, Amanda, that looks like a, f apart from ends, that looks like a finished object. It does, doesn't it? That really does look like a finished object. And that's because it very nearly is. So I've got a few ends, as you can see, uh, just lying around that need to be sewn in. And this is, ah, uh, yeah, inside a lot more ends. This is a pattern by the fabulous Sam Sabido. And I discovered Sam during lockdown when she ran a lot of online uh, Zoom workshops. And I'll never forget, uh, there was one that I attended online and there were over 60 participants. Now I think I'm right in saying that Sam was or is a school teacher. Um, I think it is in the past tense, I think she used to be um, a school te teacher. I think she focuses completely on um, designing, crochet designing now. I also believe she's got a book um, that you can pre-order, um, a crochet book that you can pre-order on Amazon. So if I'm organised, I'll put a link in below because Sam is just absolutely wonderful. Um, and she also runs lots of knit and natters and um, retreats. Um, and after having done numerous workshops with her during lockdown, I was determined to actually get to meet her in person. And so it would have been just over a year ago when I went down um, near Tring where her workshops were being held. Um, and it was a day retreat and we made, I didn't finish it in the day, but it didn't take that long to make, this stash busting uh, bag. And I absolutely love it. It's got a, a gusset bottom, really useful shopping bag. But it was a stash buster and it's made out of acrylic yarn. And of course, acrylic yarn will stretch. If I were to use this as a shopping bag, it will stretch. And the only thing I need to do is to sew a lining into this bag. That's all I need to do. Hmm? And cut that ball of yarn off. In fact, let's do that now and then I can get rid of the ball of yarn. There we go, just got that end to sew in. So, I've had this lying under my coffee table for a year. And all I need to do is sew a lining in. And there was talk of you could probably use a pillowcase. Um, or a, an existing tote bag would may well fit in there. That would be a really simple um, way to do a lining. Or... As some of you may know, I do sew. Uh, I used to make bags to sell in my Etsy shop. Uh, so I'm not short of fabric to make my own lining. And that's all I need to do. I bet if I were to allocate an hour, that would be more than enough time for me to finish that project. So that's all I need to do. Whip number one. Oh, look at this. Moving on. This will be a, a yarn advent from Cuddle Bums from 2020. Hang on. We've just had 2023, 2022. And I never finished making whatever it is I was making with it because I couldn't get on with the pattern. That was the reason. I couldn't get on with the pattern, so I was going to do something else. Oh, look. Who remembers these? So not technically a whip. Well, I suppose it is because 
there is a project somewhere with some of these mini skeins started. Do I count that or not? I'm not going to count that. That's just more, that's yarn stash. I'm not going to count it as a whip. Don't judge me. <laughs> that is very frothy. I feel like I've got froth on my face. Oh. Hmm. Right, here's the next one. This was from last year, I believe. And it was when, uh, it was a crochet sanctuary project. And it will be this gorgeous bird. Um, Cameron, the, Molo the Molucan Electus. Uh, no, Eclectus Parrot, and it's a toft one. Look, Kerry Lord ran a workshop at uh, the Crochet Sanctuary and signed our patterns for us. Mm. So how have I got on with this? Well, I've got a couple of legs, so that's pretty good. Huh. It looks like I've got a body as well. Well, that's still attached to the ball of yarn and I've got a wing so two legs a body and one wing so that looks like all that's missing off this is another wing and these fancy tail feathers at the back oh and a, um, the beak so I've got the beak that would need to be finished so again that's not much is it maybe an evening's work and then another hour to sew it together maybe that's not much, is it? This was a limited edition ball um, colourway that the uh, that Toft kindly dyed for the Crochet Sanctuary. There were two different colourways. There was another one in green, sort of greeny yellow colour. Um, and apparently, there I think there were two birds, two different patterns. Uh, the other pattern was the green and yellow one um, and people were swapping sort of what yarn they'd got left so that they could make uh, the other one so I'd one of each colour because you can see how much yarn I've got left uh, and I've nearly finished I've only got the fancy tail feathers to do um, will I do that? I don't think I will because again it's probably it's probably been a year trying to think when Kerry Lord went to the crochet sanctuary and I can't remember but it's probably been a year um and I haven't even finished the first one so and as we all know or if you're new here you won't know amigurumi which is what these sort of like making these animal type things are are not my most favorite of crochet projects I like making them but they're not my most favorite um so yes so I should finish it shouldn't I that's not going to take me long which is probably why it's been under the coffee table because I know it's not going to, it's like, oh, I just need to finish that. <sighs> so that's two. Should we look at the next? Right. Back under the coffee table I go. Oh, yes, I remember this. So this was, I think this was a, uh, when uh, Lou from Wool Monkey, my local yarn shop, when she used to do uh, a subscription box, um, Crochet is Cool it was called, and 
you always got two patterns and there was the bobble pencil case and a basic crochet sock pattern and I was going to make the bobble pencil case uh, you got the zip with it there's a hook in there and look we got this sorber ball look at that isn't that gorgeous but I don't actually now think I want to make either of those patterns because this is such a beautiful ball of uh, yarn. I mean, they'd make great socks, wouldn't they? Knitted socks. And knitted socks are something that I do want to master. Oh, and I did recently buy, talking of like being lured in by patterns, I did recently buy um, a basic sock pattern from um, Carrie at Peak District Yarns because my friend Sharon, she attended a workshop by Carrie um, on how to learn to knit socks. And both Sharon and I have attended a couple of workshops and never quite, not by Carrie, by other people and never quite got to grips with it. But there was something about Carrie's pattern, the way she taught um, on this workshop, that everything clicked into place. And uh, she, um, my yeah, Sharon is now, I think she's knitted about five pairs of socks. Um, and she only started, she only went on the workshop at the beginning of the year. So she's done really, really well. So in six months, she's, in less than six months, she's knitted five pairs of socks so I think they'd look really nice socks they'd look yeah they'd make really nice socks so perhaps what I will do is I'll put that in a project bag with the pattern that I bought um, from Carrie so technically it's not actually a whip is it because I haven't started it so again I'm going to put that on the um, I'll put that on the pile with the advent calendar. Um, so that's just actually my yarn stash is increasing now. As opposed to... Because it's like a... It's a sort of conveyor belt, isn't it? It's a process. The, the yarn starts off in the stash then it progresses down the line to be a work in progress. So I feel like that yarn has maybe taken a step back. It's gone from being a work in progress with the potential to do the bobble pencil case. And it's now taken a step back and it's gone to back to the stash. That's not great, that is it, really? None of this is great, let's face it. None of this is great. This is shameful, absolutely shameful. But I love it. <laughs> Sorry. I can't help myself. None of us can. Right, I can see something else under my coffee table. Shall I go back down and, and have a look? I've just realised my back door's open and the windows because it's such a hot day. And if my neighbours can hear me talking, they'll think I've gone completely loopy. <laughs> just in case they don't know that already. Right, let's sort those patterns out. I'm going to put the toft ones with the toft bird. Otherwise, I won't be able to finish it. Right, what have we got here? Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I remember this so well. Anybody else remember last Christmas? I think. Please tell it was me. Please tell me it was last Christmas and not the year before. A bit worried now. So this was the crochet along run by was it Serdar? I'm not sure. It might have been Serdar. I'm not sure, but it was the uh, Hayfield bonus DK Nordic Christmas crochet along. Um, with Helen from MCAT Crochet. This is week one. 
I do like to I do like to print out my patterns and I have only got week one printed which means I didn't get beyond week one in fact and, and I put everything look it was a kit and I put everything just move that out of the way I put everything in this basket that I'd made at the crochet sanctuary um, and I think this pattern is available to buy um, on their, in their Etsy store I think so look, doesn't it look lovely? I mean, it's all about the aesthetics, isn't it? And I was so pleased with how, you know, this basket fitted all the yarn in for this fabulous crochet along that I started a very long time ago. Um, I think by the looks of it, I made one square. How many squares should I have made in week one? Well, the tree, I did the tree. Tree two, tree three, tree four. There should have been four trees and I've done one tree. This is quite an easy thing to decide on. I'm not going to finish it. I know I'm not going to finish that. I can't even particularly say why, but I just know I'm not going to finish it. I'd love to. I'd love to. I've always wanted to make a Christmas blanket. And I think when we do go through other whips, we'll discover um, other Christmas blankets. Part finished. Part started. I can't even get as far as saying part finished because I think they will all be a bit like this one square but on the plus side I've got some fabulous colors to make a Christmas blanket so I don't need to buy another kit so I mustn't be tempted by future kits that I might see I mustn't I really mustn't because I've got all the yarn Okay, so again, not going to count this as a whip because I've made the decision not to continue it. I mean, obviously it is a whip, but I'm not going to. The paper, the pattern will go in the scrap, um, scrap paper, so that'll get reused. Um, I think I saw the hook, I've taken the hook out. Oh, <laughs> row counter, that'll get used in another project, so that's fine. Let's make sure there's nothing else lurking in here. Oops, yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, was a whip and it's now an abandoned whip. That's embarrassing. One square. Crikey. I do remember this loop stick took ages. I think that's what put me off doing it. It's very effective though, isn't it? I couldn't face doing more. So, that's that. <laughs> so now, underneath, I'll just show you, underneath my coffee table is clear just been rambling and forgot to press record so what I did was I picked up another project from down the side and um, this pattern is um, the seed pod throw by Esme Crick from Red Sparrow Crochet and I was fortunate enough to win a signed copy on an Instagram giveaway uh, I met Esme once, and in real life, obviously. Um, and it was a proper fangirl moment, and she is just absolutely wonderful. Love Esme to bits. And yes, somebody asked me recently if this was, if it's difficult, this. 
Um, and the answer is no, it's not difficult. It's not a difficult pattern at all. Uh, once you've got the hang of it, um, once you've got the hang of uh, mosaic cro crochet, as with all things, nothing's hard once you've um, got to grips with it. And I would definitely recommend, definitely recommend um, giving mosaic crochet a go, especially Esme's, uh, Esme Crick's patterns, because a lot of the mosaic crochet, I think is two row crochet, where you end up like with lots of ends, you cut off, you do each, you have lots of ends anyway. This, you don't. You don't have any ends, um, as you can see, because you carry it up. I'm trying to see where I carry it up the side. Carry it up the side there. Um, so you don't have any ends to sew in, apart from at the beginning and the end. And that is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And I find that so relaxing. I can sit of an evening um, and, and once, once you've done one row, once you've followed the pattern, I use the chart, and once you've followed the chart for one row, then you set for the next three rows once you've done that. So four, I'm not, I, I can't explain mosaic crochet, um, but all I know is that once you've mastered, once you've cracked one row, then the next three uh, it's very intuitive as to the next three rows and then I just look at the pattern for the next and then off again so I love it absolutely love it and this was just using yarn from stash it's um, shape his yarn and colors um, it's beautiful to work with really really nice and I have it in this project bag made by my dear friend Jackie um, it started off fitting there perfectly but now obviously it's um, Bit of a tighter squeeze, but there you go, it's in there now. I love that. So, so we're up to three actual works in progress, and this is the one that I am currently working on. Um, absolutely love that mosaic throw, and that's for my bedroom. Um, uh, at some point, I hope to have it draped artistically over uh, a chair that at some point in the future I may have in my bedroom. Um, I don't have at the moment, but one day. Now, this is a blanket which looks finished and technically it is, but I've decided I just want to put a little border on. Um, just a baby blanket, simple baby blanket, granny square using a some kind of a whirl. I don't know where um, I got it from. Black sheep wools. They had it in, on special offer about seven fifty for one of these whorls, um, or colour changing balls of yarn. It wasn't like a shapier's whorl or anything like that. But I've decided I just want to do a little border, a little shell border, um, and then that will go to charity. So we're up to four: the bag, the bird, the throw. And then that blanket that needs, and that's the yarn that I'll use for the border. So, again, an evening to do that. What's in here? Hmm. Stitch marketing and nothing else. So there must have been, I must have finished whatever was in there. So that's a, an empty project bag that can go somewhere. Oh, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. So this was another Crochet is Cool um, subscription box pattern from Wool Monkey. And this was um, a baby blanket. That was a new to me design. Um, and I was getting on quite well with it, look, isn't that effective? I don't think I should have given up on it though, because I think it was one of those that, um, 
I'm probably now going to have to revisit the pattern to try and remember how I do that. But yeah, it's effective that, isn't it? It's nice. Um, but I do want to finish it. I've got my hook in there and everything. And everything. What does that sound like? I've got my hook in there and everything. <laughs> that sounds like I'm back at school. Um, yeah, so I need to finish that. That's more than an evening's work. That is like a proper work in progress. One, two, three, four, five, five. And remember, this is just what I've got in my living room. Oh, that was from the baby blanket. That's what it was. Sirdar Snuggly Patter Cake, double knitting. And there is actually a free knitting pattern on the ball band. I think that's why I didn't get rid of it. Yeah, I'll keep that and maybe knit a pattern. Ooh. Might be easier if I just pull this out. Oh, I've got another basket of loveliness. Don't they look lovely? They look lo they look lovely, don't they? I don't know if I know what this belongs to. It's a kit. It is a kit. I think I do. I think I do know what this kit is from. Okay. So this kit will be, in actual fact, you're going to have to come with me. I need to take you somewhere else. We need to go over to my dining room table for me to show you what this belongs to. Let's turn you around. So, here we go. This is um, week one of the Blossom and Buds Crochet Along. Uh, by Lottie and Albert. Again, it's a Sardar crochet along. And that basket of yarn I've just shown you is the yarn required to complete this blanket. Now, I had a few problems with uh, week one, which is why I haven't um, done any more, because my pieces didn't match up size-wise, which is why I've had to block them. And I think it's because uh, of carrying the yarn here for the bobbles, I think it made these pieces smaller. But yes, that is just this section of the blanket and I've still got all of, all of the rest to do. But I would like to finish it because I do think it looks nice. So that's another whip. But you've got to agree, it does look lovely in that basket, doesn't it? You know, I think it's all about... Well, if it looks nice, it might tempt you to actually use it. It's not going well, is it? That's two baskets of nicely presented yarn. And I've not finished it, either of them. So that's another... Whip. That's the one I've just shown you, the blossom thingy, Bobby. One, two, three, four, six, six whips. And three lots of yarn now going back into the stash. Right, moving on. Shall we see what's in this bag? Oh, that's good. This is a relief. This is just yarn relating to this basket down here, the cowl that I've just shown you. So that isn't another whip. That's quite a relief actually. I thought I'd got another project that I didn't know about or that I'd momentarily forgotten. Oh no, it's all knotted. Hook. 
think I must have taken the squares out and about with me. That's why, at one point, that's why that was there. Right. Another empty bag. Let's move you back up now. There we go. Oh. Do you know, I don't know what's going on with the screen. I'm just going to stop recording and see if I can tweak the settings. Okay. We'll see how that goes. It got a bit dark for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I think I need a makeup artist to come and powder my face. I think I feel a bit shiny. It's so warm. Ooh. Summer has finally arrived. I'm not complaining because we have sunshine. The plants are growing. It's all good. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six whips. I've already counted. And then down here. This is my temperature blanket. Again, beautiful storage. I like to have good storage for my big project, as I'm sure you've now seen. Oh, what month are we in? June, nearly the end of June. I have some squares here, which is good. These squares are good. Lots of squares. Actually, that's more than I realised. They're February squares, they are. Oh, a couple more here. So quite a few for February. But I haven't done any for March or April or May or June. And the only ones sewn together are the month of January. And here we are. I don't even know where the beginning is. There we go. The white signifies the start of the month. Had a couple of hot days because I was on holiday. Um, the beginning of January. And then I got home. <laughs> um, so this is definitely a work in progress and I really do need to do some work on this. I know why it's come to a halt. It's because um, I need some different colours to complete some squares. And the rest of the yarn pack with the colours is somewhere else. And I haven't established where that somewhere else is. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to that. So again, no judgment, please. But when I find that somewhere else, then I'll be able to carry on with the, uh, with the squares and hopefully February will soon be complete. So that's definitely a whip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven whips, seven whips. Oh, phew, there's nothing more down there. Let's just, let's just check in here. Um, this is a bag that I take with me to the crochet sanctuary mm -hmm. weekends that I go on. So I'll just have a, oh, what have I got? This is, um, I really wanted to finish this as well. Beautiful lavender cushion. Uh, and we got the lavender to put in it. And I had made the two squares. So all I need to do is join those together and do the decoration on the front. You know, the sort of like, uh, surface crochet I think it is and stuff it and put the lavender in so that's that's not going to take long is it what colours do I need to finish that off well I'm not going to take the things out I'll leave them in the bag because then I know that they're in there oh 
Oh, that's, that's not bad going at all, is it? Oh, I feel quite good about that. Right, so that's, is that eight we're up to now? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Eight whips, that's fine. Eight whips. And then, oh. Oh, this is, um, so this is the very beautiful collaboration with uh, the Yarn Whisperer and Heather Gibbs, Heather C. Gibbs, um, Mischievous Magpie Shawlette. Look at that. And again, I'm doing really, really well with it. So, you know, it's not much more. Nine, that's number nine. I don't even need to count up. I know that's number nine. lights now if if I wanted to I could say that that is just uh, the end nine and technically nine is that is really down here in this room nine projects that are ongoing but if I wanted to be totally honest and upfront I would say that this blanket that has sat here for a couple of years and Amy likes, Amy, my daughter, likes to pop it on her, her, her knees when it's a bit cool in the evenings. Um, this isn't finished. Confession time, this is not finished. There is more to be done. But nobody knows. If, if I don't say, no one knows it. Apart from the ends, there's ends in each sewing but isn't it beautiful this is beautiful and i do think i've got another one on the go in different colors um up in the attic so yeah technically that is another whip i'm not going to count it um and then i've got two blankets here this is one of um eleonora's blanket from coastal Co crochet um, it would be one of her free ones. It was crochet along. It'll be on her blog. If I remember, I'll add the name of it. Absolutely stunning. I love this blanket. Beautiful, beautiful um, blanket. Uh, it's finished. It is finished. But none of the ends are sewn in. So, you know, if I wanted to spend an evening or two sewing those ends in that would make it completely finished wouldn't it i don't know if i've done the ends on this one i don't think i have <laughs> i don't think i have <laughs> this is pandemonium this was uh, written by lisa and linda rose of the crochet sanctuary and um, this was a crochet along that they ran throughout lockdown. And it is one, or oh, maybe most of them are sewn in. Oh, I don't feel so bad now. I think there's only a few odd ones. Right, I definitely need, there's just a few odd ends. I definitely need to sew those in. Definitely need to sew those in. There's not many at all. Um, this was made entirely from stash and my family took it in turns to pull a random ball of wool out of um, a bag of odds and ends that I've put together to make this blanket. So it is very, very special. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. 
um, lots of different stitches, lots of different techniques. I uh, absolutely love it. And to say it's just from stash, um, I absolutely love the colour combinations as well. So yeah, so if you want to include projects that need their end sewing in, um, there's another two there and there's a blanket that needs um, finishing. But if we don't count those, and I'm choosing not to count those, then I've got nine nine projects on the go down here and many 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 more elsewhere in the house which we will you know um work our way to but not today that is it for today uh, i just wanted to out of interest look to see what i'd got uh, just tucked down the side of the sofa and under the coffee table so nine, we've got nine proper whips ongoing. Um, and I feel a bit better actually having looked at them all because I can see that a few of them, you know, are not going to take long to finish. You know, some of them just need an evening or two to finish off and then that will be done. And I think that that is what I need to do. Otherwise, it's just going to keep getting worse um, and that's fine it's fine to have lots of whips i don't actually you know if it brings you pleasure then there shouldn't be any judgment and it does bring me pleasure but it does also bring me a little bit of sadness that i don't finish uh, these things when i especially when i get so close so i do want to finish them i think that's the important thing i do want to uh, finish them um and I feel a bit of sense of relief knowing that I'm not going to complete that Christmas blanket. That I've made a decision after having only done one square that I'm not going to finish the Christmas blanket. So that can, like I say, go back into stash and be used for something else. Uh, so that's that. Um, thank you for joining me on this uh, little whip hunt. And um, I'm not sure when part two will be out but hopefully uh, before too long I will venture into another room in my house and un unearth a few more whips so do tell me what you think of the projects uh, whether you're the same uh, as me having lots of bits lying around and are you as guilty as me of having bits so nearly finished um, and, and that wouldn't really take too much longer um, to finish completely and if you have do tell me and you know maybe this will spur you on to finish those as well I do hope so um, and until next time I'll say bye for now and thank you for watching <laughs>